lovelies it's a very beautiful saturday out here a really sunny day and i'm out by the seaside just enjoying the sea breeze enjoying the sounds from the waves can you see the water yeah i love nature and i thought what better place to stay and interact with you than right here by the seaside it's a really lovely day i hope you're also having fun wherever you are and um today we're going to be talking about sex education yes you heard me right sex education that subject that gives parents the jitters you know we're always thinking how do i broach this subject with my children what do i say to them when do i start sex education these are some of the questions we are going to be answering here today so please don't go anywhere keep to keep it hooked on to the psychologist and tv and if you're yet to subscribe this is the right time to do so please click on the subscribe button you don't want to miss any of our videos because all our videos are packed full with life-changing information come along with me as we take this ride okay so i had to get myself a really comfortable seat because you know i love to talk and i need to be comfortable to be able to um do this so the first question like i said is what is sex education now sex education is actually facilitating um, the acquisition of information regarding human sexuality i'll take that again sex education is actually facilitating the acquisition of information regarding human sexuality now this information encompasses uh, sexual anatomy human sexual anatomy uh, the sexual act itself involves information about sexual reproduction about our reproductive health about sexual ethics about the age of consent regarding sex about safe sex contraception which we already had uh, dealt with in one of our videos um, everything that has to do with sex and with the way society is going right now i tend to think that the honors rest on the parents to give their children appropriate sex education this is because at this time you can't even be sure of the value system of even the teachers and all the members of society and other social groups so you want to make sure ensure that as a parent you sex educate your children uh, starting from values and beliefs sexual ethics down to every teeny little bit about sex education yeah so another question will be when do i start sex educating my children now this is one question i've had to answer a lot and uh, you should start sex educating your children at the age of three this is because psychology has enabled us to know that from three years old which according to Sigmund Freud is uh, the phallic stage of personality development our children are sensual yeah they're sensual so what does this mean it actually means that they can have the same sensations as you an adult has when your genitals are being manipulated you see so without your children knowing about sex knowing about what is right and wrong what is safe and unsafe they can actually be abused by a stranger and because of the feelings they get which is actually enjoyable they will go along they will play along except they have ample reasons or they know that it's a wrong act so from three years old we should start sex educating our children okay you would have noticed that between the ages of three to six years old children will actually self manipulate because they enjoy the feeling so masturbation between the age of three to six years old is actually okay it's just a part of their personality development but anything after six year old six years old uh, then there's a problem and um, there are implications for your psychological uh, physical health your psychological health and uh, especially and also your spiritual health just in case um, you are a spiritual person yeah so these children have to be thought and where do we start from okay so sex education for a three-year-old actually start with knowledge of their sexual anatomy as a matter of fact they are going to be curious and they're going to be asking questions and so the practice in the olden days was when they ask questions you hush them up say okay don't talk about this you shouldn't be talking about this or we give them uh, ridiculous answers that should not be the case actually the thing is if you don't teach your children the right thing people out there will teach them the wrong thing 
or will take advantage of their ignorance. So the onus rests on you as a parent to make sure that when your children ask questions out of, out of curiosity, you give them the correct answers. Find a way to give them age-appropriate answers. Find a way to uh, make sure that the information they imbibe from you is the right information. Like I said, the place to start is the sexual anatomy. Teach them the correct names of the sexual organs. The vagina for the girl, the penis for the boy, the breast. Don't tell them the penis is called the monkey. Now there was this incident that was reported in the daily some years ago of a child who was being uh, abused by somebody in the neighborhood. And each time the parents went out and came in, this child told the parents that she had been playing with uh, the neighbor's monkey for the purpose of this video, we'll call him Mr. Phillips. So she says, I've been playing with Mr. Phillips' monkey and when I do that, he gives me sweets. And the parents who had told this child that the penis was called the monkey had forgotten. So they began to imagine that Mr. Phillips had a monkey. Not until the day that a neighbor, another neighbor, caught Mr. Phillips in the act. You know, what he did was that he had trousers or pants that have holes in them, and so he asked the children to put their hands through the holes and manipulate his genitals. So he got caught by a neighbor, and when this neighbor reported the incident to the parents of this child, and they were upset with this child and said, but you never told us. And then the girl said, but I told you every day that I've been playing with Mr. Phillips' monkey. So that's the danger of um, using other names, nicknames, to call the genitals. Let them know the real names of the genitals. So that's the starting point. Another thing you should do, another way to self-educate your young ones, is to teach them about the parts of their bodies that are private and should not be touched by strangers and the parts that are public. So you let them know the areas of the face that are public and can be used as such and then the areas that are private. For instance, no stranger out there should kiss them on their lips. And as a matter of fact, it's not even in our culture to the French kiss is for the French people. And so they should be weary of somebody who comes too close, you know. So from the neck up is the public, for the public view, for the hands public, and then from the knees down public. And you tell them that no stranger should touch the breast area or touch their vagina or touch any of any one of these areas that have not been mentioned so let them know the parts of their body that are private uh, and the parts that are public and remember that the private part is not even to be touched by any male whether it's an uncle an auntie uh, anybody that's not their mommy or that's not responsible for yeah, care. So that's it. That's. I'm not by any means implying that all of this is easy. Believe you me. Even as you know, a counselor and an educational psychologist, each time I want to broach the subject of sex education with my children, I still get the jitters. What is something that we really have to do for our children's good? You know, and sometimes we have to be very, very deliberate about sex education. Uh, arrange and write down what you want to tell them, and get them seated, and tell them this is what we are going to talk about, and talk about it with them. Other times, you know, casually, like I said, whilst watching a movie, uh, whilst walking the road and all of that. Now, one other way to approach the subject of sex education with your children is by getting them books to read. Uh, my mother used to do that. She had two books she bought. Um, everything a teenage girl should know and everything a teenage boy should know and so when once you got into teenage once you got to 13 years old she gave you that book to read which of course she had read by herself and examined and ensured that information that was contained in that book is consistent with her value system and her beliefs so what she did was when you got to 13 years old she gave you that book to read and as you read the book chapter after chapter she Look for a time to sit down with you, to discuss that chapter with you, to ensure that you understood what was contained in there. And she also added, you know, gave you additional information. Six girls she had, and she did that with every one of us. So we don't have an excuse. Get them some books. But before you get them any book, ensure that you have the time to go through this book, to, to know, you know, to ascertain that the, the information in the book uh, is consistent with your value system and your belief because there's a whole lot of literature out there that can be misleading. Like I wrote in my book, The Unique Teenager, I remember buying a book that said sex, life, and money, and I thought it was going to be a good read. I was going to add to my knowledge base about human sexuality. When I read that book, because the value system of the writer was so different from mine, it was, um, uh, to say the least, um, 
not a very good experience so somewhere midway uh, you know into reading the book i couldn't go on i had to drop the book and uh, blacklisted it i actually had to write on it to instruct my children whether i was going to be there or not they shouldn't read the book I, you know when you do that you're actually giving them uh making them so curious that they'll want to read so eventually i took off the book from the shelf and had to dump it somewhere so before you give your children books to read to educate them on their sexuality ensure you have read and that the information that is contained in there is what you want to pass on to your children now one other thing that forms a very good basis for sex education is religion i've said time and time again i'm a christian i believe um in what the bible says and so passing on your belief system uh depending on what you believe it forms a good basis for your children you know it gives them good reasons to want to stay away from the sexual experience until the right time which for me according to my belief system is after marriage that's the right time actually for them to get into sexual activities anytime before then i believe is sin and so that forms a good basis a good reason for you to tell them to delay sexual activity you know that from when they become adolescents and teenagers because of the hormonal uh, work in their system you know they actually um attracted to the opposite sex and without you teaching them these things letting them know that they will get attracted letting them know that they will experience crushes letting them know how they will feel how the opposite sex feels and you know what could come out of all of this they'll make mistakes so you actually have to teach them about uh, what will happen to them when they get into adolescence uh, and then teach them what happens to the opposite sex you know so they know what to expect and they know how to handle all of these feelings you know like i said we must teach them all these things if we love them we don't want them to make mistakes and they have all of these um, friends out there that are confidently pouring out you know uh, wrong information uh, trying to convince them uh, to engage in casual sex we have um, the internet these days where they have people or named on the people hitting on them from the internet and trying to uh, impose the wrong values on them uh, we have free pornography on the internet you've got to give your children a reason to stay clean and as a matter of fact you should begin sex education before like i said three years old let them know most of these things before they begin to experience them because that will equip them to be able to handle these feelings and handle the situations that they face as a matter of fact before doing this video today even if i have consistently discussed sex with my children i also gather them up in my room again this morning to ensure that i'm not going to tell you what i'm not doing so i had a section of sex education with my children this morning it's what every parent should do it's uncomfortable sometimes it's uh, something we don't want to deal with but something that we have to deal with so please sex educate your children now to round up this video I'd like to discuss uh, some things I think we can do with our children to protect them from being sexually abused or probably we we'll say some uh, red flag signs uh, of an abuser. So what can we do? Like we have said before, let the children know the correct names of all of their genital, their genital organs. Do not uh, give them nicknames and when they ask questions, give them um, appropriate, age appropriate, correct answers. Don't try to deceive them now some red flag signs of an abuser because presently currently everyone is suspect and the children uh, should know this that is not to say they should grow up suspecting everyone but they should actually have uh, time and again discussed uh, some experiences i've had and some experiences that have been shared with me uh, somebody took the family member with the children and left them in the car to go shop in the market and by the time she got back uh, somebody else saw that gentleman two kids the older one in front manipulating the breast of that little girl so we have to be careful let's not pretend that it's okay because really not it's not okay anymore so we should watch out for what our children call people who are not related to them by blood for instance no calling of some random neighbor some random man in the neighborhood uncle or auntie as a matter of fact i hope we know that in our day both the girl child and the boy child need to be protected from sexual abusers and sexual offenders because it's no longer a sex specific thing girl child boy child could be abused so let them call only their uncles and aunties who are related to them by blood uncle and auntie because when once you called someone an uncle and auntie the child knows what an uncle means they know what an auntie means so once they call somebody uncle and aunt or auntie they trust that person and so they are likely to allow the person 
be out of trust, do whatever the person likes. And some of these uncle, aunties, cousins, uh, or some of these people who are even strangers but are called uncle, aunties, use uh, the, the trust that these children have for them as a weapon and then they abuse these children. So we should be careful. Don't let anybody, them call anybody who is not really an uncle or an auntie, uncle or auntie. Secondly, anybody giving your children gifts should actually give them the gifts through you. So if there's some person, some man in the neighborhood who is always buying gifts for your children, you know, and maybe your, your girl child comes home every day, this person bought me this, this person bought me that, you must educate your children not to accept gifts and then also find out from the child the condition under which they accepted those gifts. So nobody should come buying them gifts anyhow without your knowledge. They should pass the gifts through you, the parents. That's some other thing. And then when they interact with your children, like I said, watch out how these people interact with your children when they come. Who hugs the child, how they hug your children. That's why you have to be very conscious and alert around your children. And um, like for instance, there was this uh, relative uh, who came in and I noticed that when he took my one year old girl child at that time, each time he took the child, he just took the child's butt straight to his penis and then there was this movement i noticed that there was something wrong and so when i got my child off that man and throughout uh, the period of his stay i ensured that he didn't have the child so we must be observant we must be uh, on alert to know what's happening around our children okay don't don't take chances don't really trust anyone absolutely it is your duty to protect your children so do not allow anyone you any man to come to your home and begin to refer to your girl child as my wife when you're there because when you're there and you do nothing uh, the child hears you hearing some neighbor uncle someone calling her my wife and you're saying nothing that fact settles into their head and so that person can take advantage when you're not there to tell them okay your mommy knows you're my wife and she doesn't frown Sometimes they can show them a video and say, okay, this is what husband and wives do, and we should do this. And the innocent child, who will be easily gullible at the age, would give in. So we should be careful. Someone comes around and is calling your child my wife or my husband, clarify issues and put a stop to it right there. Do not let it sleep. Also, the way your children react around um, strangers, around neighbors, around relatives, is also, uh, you should watch out. It might be an indication of uh, what is going on if you find out that your child is uncomfortable around a certain neighbor that's a signal don't ignore that you should actually find out from your child why are you uncomfortable what is happening there's something i should know and please listen to your children oftentimes our children discuss these things with us sometimes non-verbally sometimes verbally but some parents tend to disbelieve their children and believe strangers over their children like I said, sex education is an ongoing topic and the different aspects of sex education that we shall be discussing on this channel from time to time. So for today, this will be all. I hope that I've started you on on the part of sex educating your children. Uh, please subscribe to The Psychologist NGTV by clicking on the word subscribe below this video and also click on the bell sign to enable notifications so that when we have a new video uploaded, you will be notified. Uh, I want to hear what you think about this video. Please leave a comment for me in the comment section. If you like the video, if you like the effort I'm putting in, be kind enough to hit the like button. And then please share this information with as many people as need to hear these things. And uh, please reach out to me on Instagram, Instagram at the Psychologist NG, on Facebook at the Psychologist NG, and on Twitter at the Psychologist NG. I really want to hear from you. Uh, thank you for sticking through with me today. I've had an exciting time out here. Like I said, I'm enjoying the sea and the sun. And yet the sun is getting a little bit harsh. Before I go, let me leave you with uh, a view of this beautiful place. You know, and enjoy the view with me. Have a nice Saturday out there. And see you again next week. Lots of love from me to you. Uh, thank you so much for today. Bye.